I was probing on what I, what my view of victimhood is. He's uh, asked if I think that it's insulting for someone to sort of foist the title of victim on me. Um, and again, I think that we're kind of not entirely clear on what I'm referring to by victimhood. What I would say is, I'd, I'd sort of illustrate it this way. <clears throat> Two people go through some sort of trauma, a serious trauma. The, the, the trauma they go through is almost identical. One person is permanently marked by it. They have seen themselves as, <clears throat> or seen this event, this trauma of theirs. Uh, whether they put it together logically or it's just intuitive or whatever, but in some fundamental, very fundamental sense, um, the first person sees themselves to have been fundamentally altered by that trauma. <clears throat> and whatever they are is now um, been fundamentally um, influenced by this traumatic event <clears throat> in a negative way. Um, they, um, this person now sees uh, themselves as fundamentally damaged, as fundamentally disadvantaged in terms of all their other, all their peers, everyone else. They see themselves as marked, as handicapped, as disabled, as whatever you want to call it. Um, as somehow permanently damaged. They are now permanently in a deficit. And again, this might not be something that they rationally work out in their heads. It might be just sort of, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back type thing, or the, you know, you've reached your limit. You, know, you, you just can't take anymore, and this is, this is not necessarily broken you, but it, you're, it has become part of what you are, this trauma. <clears throat> and it's, <clears throat> it's something you see as a negative. Um, and you kind of resist the idea of seeing it as anything other than a negative. That's the first person. <clears throat> the second person goes through exactly the same uh, trauma or has the same fundamental, or I don't know what you'd call it, the same disadvantages as the first person or whatever, the same events befell them as someone, as the first person. Um, but this person refuses to think of themselves as somewhat of a lesser person as a result of what has happened to them. That they're not disabled, that, that this isn't fundamentally who they are, this event. Uh, it's something that happened to them. It's not what they are. <clears throat> now, this is kind of controversial, but I've often thought that we have a pretty, I don't know, self-destructive view of things like rape and child abuse. In a sense, too much empathy given to people like that kind of tells them you know, that poor you, you'll never recover from this. This is just too horrible to contemplate. It's just awful. Uh, you can't recover. Um, anyone in your position has every right to feel utterly damaged, besmirched. Um, so you just go and lay down over there. Um, and um, from now on, whatever you require is more or less your right because of what horrible things have happened to you. Um, that's a sort of, that's the first one, that's the, the, the sort of intuitive thinking that informs the first idea of victimhood, that you're damaged, that you're fundamentally damaged, that you're fundamentally disadvantaged, that you've been fundamentally you know, there's a fundamental injustice based on what you are. 
you are you are a fundamental victim of an oppression, an injustice of something that shouldn't have happened to you, uh, and it's left its mark on you more or less forever. The second person says, yes, this has happened to me, but it's in the past and the past is gone. I can't do anything about the fact that it's in the past. It is a brute fact that won't change. What do I do about that reality? Do I allow it to define me? Um, do I allow people to treat me as though um, I'm a weaker person than they are? Uh, that Do I allow people or do I uh, um, allow myself to see myself as poor me, poor me, poor me? Now this entire thing, this entire dynamic, this entire comparison that I'm making between person A and person B, you have to see that from a first person perspective. I'm not talking about ceteris paribus, what do, which of these two people has got the right idea. That's not what I'm referring to. I'm saying from that person's point of view, in other words, if I were to choose which way I want to go in my life, and I'm not saying that I can actually do this, but it's just what do I, what would I prefer to do, or what, what do I have more respect for in myself? I would say I wanted to be the second person who just sort of says, this is as Epictetus would say, something that's not in my control, and worrying about it makes me a slave. Or putting too much emphasis on it makes me a slave. Um, I am allowing myself to be fundamentally defined by things that I have no control over. Uh, the second option of sort of resistance to victimhood is saying that I will not be defined by things over which I have no control. You see the difference. 